Please tonight. If you are still down the back, why don't you uh, wander on down? I even encourage you if uh, if you're someone that likes being up the front, start wandering uh, up the front this evening. Um, we're going to worship God tonight. I hope that you've spent some time reflecting over the last couple of days uh, on Jesus uh, and what He's done through the cross for us. Uh, today we celebrate a living Jesus Christ, hey, a risen Saviour. Yeah, He's not just a risen Saviour, but He's the only God that exists. Every other is a counterfeit. Uh, today I was uh, just reading, as we all uh, probably do, uh, the account of uh, Jesus at the resurrection. And, and a part that stood out for me was the bit right at the end where after Jesus has spent many days revealing himself to the disciples, he uh, all of a sudden just disappears up into the cloud and they're all left, left wondering. And, uh, do you know, Jesus has not abandoned us. It, it might look like he abandoned the disciples, but Jesus had a greater plan in store for mankind. And I want to go back, and this is a scripture that I like to reflect on at this time of year. And it was, it's actually the, pr the prayer of Jesus just before he was crucified, because it gives us an insight to what was important to him. And Jesus first prays for his disciples, and he prays that their joy might be full, but he prays that they might be one as He is one with the Father and that, that they might be one with Him. And so there's this union which the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ at that point in time is desiring between the relationship with Him and His disciples. And so there is no sign of abandonment in that message. And we see then that Jesus starts to pray for the body, for all of those who are going to believe in Him in the future. And that's, that's you and I. And, and the interesting thing is he actually prays the same thing for you and I that he prays for his disciples. And that is that we might be one. It is that we might be one. And, and we, we might perceive that to be, well, I tolerate the rest of the church or I tolerate some people. Yeah, or, or I'm happy to hang around them, but I'm going to sort of stay a distant or I'm going to run my own race as a Christian. Yet what happens here in John chapter 17 is that Jesus draws a parallel between Him and God. And He says, I desire that the body be one, Father, as you and I are one. Not, not just we, we acknowledge each other or we respect each other, but the unity that existed between the Father and the Son, Jesus is saying, I desire for my body. And not only do I desire that for my body one to another, but I desire my body to be in unity with me. I desire my body to be unity with the Father. And so there's this picture, not only of the Spirit of God coming and dwelling within us as individuals, but there is a picture of the whole body of Christ. Every one of us with Jesus, with the Father in total unity. And it says that in His presence is fullness of joy. And that is what He was praying for His disciples. What He was praying for us is that we might be in fullness of joy. Do you know, when we are in unity, God commands a blessing. We're going through a period of change. We're going to have some disruption. But you know, if we stand in unity, as we walk together as one, not as individuals, not as having our own opinion, but we are part of something much bigger, which is a union, not of tolerance, but it is where we dwell within each other in the same way that Christ dwells in us. Let's tonight, let's worship Him as one. 
Let's honour Jesus that He didn't abandon us as He did or appeared to with the disciples, but He had something greater in mind. He went and stood beside the Father and said, let's impart the Spirit of God into my church. Let's create a unity that I could not create as a man on the earth. And tonight, that is what we step into. Let's honour Jesus for what He's done. He has created one body to glorify Him tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Let's come and worship Him. Let's come out the front. Jesus, we honour You tonight. We glorify You, Jesus. It is not about You as a body, but it is about You as a Spirit, about the Spirit of God that comes and dwells with men. And tonight we celebrate You, Jesus. We celebrate You as the Spirit here with us tonight dwelling within us, empowering your body to do greater works than you could do in your body. And so we glorify you tonight. We welcome you, Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, in Jesus' name.
just lift your voice to the Lord, sir, just for a moment. Come on. Bless his name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bring you the glory, it's you deserve, it's you deserve.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son.
position. He took all the keys. He took all authority. And he finished it with his blood. He finished it with his blood. And now we stand in victory and we get to worship him. We get to worship him and glorify his name. Oh, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. Oh, I just want to open it up to the prophetic voices in the house. Oh, but we, we praise you, God. Just stay in this posture of admiration, admiration for what he's done. Seated on the throne, Jesus, you alone are worthy. You're worthy. Seated on the throne, Jesus, you alone are worthy. You're worthy. Seated on the throne, Jesus, you alone are worthy. You're worthy. Seated on the throne. circumstance you are worthy of our devotion worthy of our promotion you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy you're worthy seated on the throne jesus you alone are worthy you're worthy God. Yes, you're worthy, God. Yes, you're worthy, God. Yes, you're worthy, God. During worship, the Lord took me to Acts 11, where Peter sees the sheet coming down from heaven and all the various things that are on there. And I saw something similar, but it was much, much thicker. It was like a, the thickness of a doona. And it was massive. It just seemed to go on forever and on this blanket, doona, sheet, thingy. There was just, there were many choice foods that the Lord had put on there. There were vegetables, there were fruits, there were choice meats, just everything you can think of. But then around, in amongst it, were gift wrap boxes with ribbons around them. And as I looked, Jesus was stood in the middle of this blanket and he was picking these things up and he was handing them out. And he said, don't just look at what I have provided, take a hold of what I have, what I have provided. Pull the ribbon, because within each box is a gift and an anointing that I want to bestow upon you. And I'm just, I'm again, just saying, do not just look, partake, take a hold. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We say yes, God. We say yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As we were worshipping, I got the same words, worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. And there was a holiness of the presence of God here today. And the Lord's saying, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I've come that you may have life, life more abundantly. And I saw Jesus, a picture of Jesus, and he had the most simple gown on and he had a crown on his head. And he was saying, I gave it all for you. I gave it all for you. 
And He's saying today, that is for you. Whatever you need is for you. And I heard the same words as Rebecca, that there's a freedom and there's a victory here today. And there's a that freedom that Jesus wants you to step into that freedom because He paid a great price for the freedom. He laid His life down. He spilled His blood. And He's saying, I've earned that freedom for you. And this freedom is for you. And there's an invitation here in the house today. And the Lord is saying to you, step into the freedom. Step into everything that I have for you. Don't stay where you have. I've given you the victory. Now walk in the victory. Amen, 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 amen. If that's you, just, just say, yes, God, I step into the freedom. I step into the victory that you have for me. Yes, God. Say, yes, God, I take it in Jesus' Name. I take it in Jesus' Name. And we say thank You. <laughs> we say thank You. We give thanks with a grateful heart because of what He's done. With a grateful heart, with a heart of devotion. We say thank You. Why don't you take a moment and just say thank You, God. Thank You, God, for giving Your Son. Thank You, God. Thank you, God. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. Oh, we say thank you for what you did. We say thank you for who you are. We say you are worthy. We say you are worthy. Oh, he's beautiful, God. What a kind, kind Father. But, a, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The <laughs> King of kings and the Lord of lords has His hand out to you. A King of the Lord of lords who in such freedom and such victory yet comes close to you. Comes close to you. Oh, we say thank you, God. We say thank you, God. We say thank you for all you've done and all you're doing. Yes. And Lord, on this Resurrection Sunday, we thank you for all that was accomplished at the cross, all that was accomplished by your blood. And we say thank you. We say thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Oh, He's a wonderful God. Why don't you say hello to somebody? Give them a hug. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Easter Sunday. Well, welcome to church on this Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter, everyone. It's so good to have you here in the house of the Lord together. Come on, uh, Alan, come and tell us all the things. How are you doing? Are you good? It's good to see you. Bless the Lord. <clears throat> Praise you, Jesus. Okay, bless the Lord. Who's having a good night? Man, I'm having a good night. Holy Spirit, Jesus, our Father. Do we have visitors here with us tonight? You want to give us a wave? I'd love to just acknowledge that you're here with us tonight. Thank you. Bless you guys. Bless you. Just appreciate you coming out tonight and fellowshipping. Uh, I, I also just honour you for acknowledging Jesus today and what he's uh, done through the cross. So thank you for coming and celebrating that with us. Um, there will be a QR code uh, popping up shortly. If you'd like to uh, connect, get to know us a little better, you can jump on there. There's also a Hello Hub down the back, um, which has the same QR code. So if you'd like to connect with us uh, beyond saying day to everyone, um, then please do that. That'll be wonderful.
A couple of announcements. Firstly, for uh, parents with kids, um, l- wonderful Naomi has set up the back um, room. Um, it is not being managed. It is parents self-managed, um, but there's a bunch of resources and things in there. Uh, the kids can do some colouring and drawing and things. Um, so if that's helpful for any parents tonight, particularly through the preaching, um, that's available for you. So please take advantage of that. Just a couple of other announcements. Um, prophetic breakthrough booths um, next week. Now, Dom Arama right here, Mr. Wave. There he is. Um, Dom's looking after that for us um, next Sunday. Uh, if you would like to um, you know, partner with some of our prophetic voices to hear um, what the Spirit of God is saying um, in your life at this time, um, here's an opportunity to do that. Uh, jump on our website, uh, register, and you'll get given um, a time slot for that for next week. So uh, please uh, jump on and do that or see Dom. Um, next week is our final week in this building next week okay so two more services Um, it's an exciting time let's come and let's just enjoy uh, what God has done now I haven't been here for the last 15 or so years Um, some people have Um, but what a great opportunity to reflect on what the Spirit of God has done in this place Um, And I look forward to what God is going to do going forwards. I heard from a little dicky bird that 15 years ago, it was exactly the same situation. Yeah? And here we are, life repeating itself 15 years later. God provided this and God is going to provide the next step. He's going to open the doors. Uh, He is king. Um, and, and we just rest uh, in his peace in that. Amen. Praise the Lord. So come next week. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we have some prayer requests too. Let's do that. Make sure I'll do that last, but let's make sure we do that before I leave. Um, if there's just some ways of giving, um, let's pop them up, please. Thanks, Dylan. I felt, I felt when I was down the front worshipping tonight exactly what was spoken, victory. And I I felt the Spirit of God to say to chase victory in finance tonight. And so I was going to take a few moments. Um, If you hang around me, you'll hear me bang on about the blessings of Abraham. You'll hear me bang on about it. I do not apologise. Do you know that there is an identity that comes through what Christ did on the cross, which he has purchased for us? And we become grafted in, as Romans declares, into a tree that has the blessing, the family of Abraham and the blessings that come with it. You know, there's a financial identity that Christ has purchased through the cross, which is the blessing of Abraham. Now, I, 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 we won't go into Genesis today to read that. Go home and read the extent of that. But I want to share you something that maybe you haven't quite picked up. If we go down two more generations, you've got Isaac and then you've got Jacob and you've got a story about Jacob and Esau. And so often we can relate to Esau in our financial life. We make financial mistakes and we may even have made some declarations against the blessing of God or the blessings that God is trying to do in our life. And sometimes we can look at our past and feel like that we've actually done God a disservice in our finances for a whole bunch of different reasons. It might be that you haven't given when you felt led to do so. It might be that you've partnered with some things that you shouldn't have with finances and it went wrong. You know, we give Esau a bit of a hard time. But let me just share that when Jacob ran from Esau because he deceived, many years later he came back a very wealthy man. And we know that he was scared of his brother when God called him to come back. And so he he presented a gift to his brother. And his brother Esau, in response to that, He says, brother, God has blessed me. Keep your gift. 
but he still gives the gift. And so we see that Esau, even in the shipwreck of some of his previous decisions, acknowledged the overflow of blessing that still continued in his life. Do you really, Let's go forward and get pretty excited because when we go into Deuteronomy chapter 2, we see Moses is giving a command to the children of Israel. They've spent the 40 years in the desert and they're about to go into the promised land. And he's giving them a bunch of things to, to think about, to comply with when they step into the promised land. Do you know one of the first things that Moses says, which God declared? He said, do not take Mount Seir. Do not take Seir because I have given that to Esau as an inheritance. Not only that, the extent to which God honoured Esau financially, he said to the children of Israel, I'm not even going to give you a foot of it. He said, if you think you're going to eat the food of that land, you're going to pay for it. And if you think you're going to drink the water when you pass through, you're going to pay for it. And so I just want to declare, if tonight, if you have a history in your life where you feel like you've been a bit of an Esau with your finances, I want to declare tonight that God still honours the Esau's. God still prepares a blessing for every one of us. But you know, today, we are a blessed family of Abraham. So whether you feel like you're Esau or not, do you know that you are blessed? And we're going into a period of change, and I feel a real momentum in the Spirit of God financially. as an opportunity for you to let go of the past and acknowledge who you are and who your identity is through Abraham and the family of Abraham. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Jesus, that you today, you're risen and you're living and you're living in our finances. You are living in a blessing that you have declared for us from Abraham right through, from generation to generation. Father, we declare that we are grafted into your tree and we walk in that blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I rebuke every mentality of Esau, the mistakes and and wrong, uh, wrong decisions. Father, we put them to bed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and we take on our identity as blessed sons and daughters in Jesus' name. Father, I extend that to the prayer request, Father, of our online community. Father, we bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I lift up this list to you, Lord, and we just thank you that you are a God who is here with us tonight. Father, in the lounge room of every person, Father, tonight who is watching, who is crying out for a miracle, who is crying out for healing, he is stage four cancer. We've got financial needs, recovery from stroke, a bunch of creatures changes, spinal cords, etc. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you know the detail of every request. Father, we declare it done tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, their heritage, Father, for what Jesus has bore on the cross, we step into that tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and we say it's done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Bless the Lord. Okay, I'm going to ask our wonderful pastor, Tom. Let's give him a hand. (laughs) Pastor Tom is going to come and wow us. No, not today. So my wife is back in the house. So she spoke on Friday night and then Saturday morning she woke up with no voice. So she would have loved to be up here speaking to you and seeing you all, but they've given me the job instead. Not to preach, just to tell you about what's happening with the, with the move. So um, if you haven't heard... Um, 
we're moving out of this building in one week's time. So um, the first service we had here was in January 2010. So everybody's been saying 15 years, but my engineering brain <laughs> says we've been just over 14 years. <laughs> on the way to 15, but we won't quite make it. So there's many memories, and I remember whens of what's happened in this building, and that's something we can take with us if we don't lose that. So next weekend will we'll be our last two meetings, so Friday at 7 p.m., and then Sunday at 4 p.m. So they'll be the last time to come here. So everybody remember that. Last time next weekend. So God is a space, a place specially prepared for us. He's not gonna leave us in the wilderness. So we're a very prophetic community here and we find some significance in all sorts of things. So I, I thought about the numbers. Um, when we leave here, we would have been here 14 years and three months. So 14, three, what does that mean? So God, so um, God took me to John chapter 14. And we'll start in verse one, but verse three is very interesting. It's a great, great encouragement for the roller coaster ride that we've been on the last few months. So John chapter 14 says, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have not told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And this is verse 3. When everything is ready, I will come and get you, and you will always be with me where I am. So that's a great encouragement for me, and, and I think you can all hold on to that word, that, that God is going to come and get us when, when the right place is ready. Um, so we found out last year that this um, place was being investigated for redevelopment. Um, we heard that it was Tesla that was was going to move in here. So we found out since that it's a development com company going to redevelop the site and Tesla will be their, their, their tenant in the future. So um, at that time we, we started looking around and at the end of last year we found a building that we really liked in Eagle Farm. Um, it was bigger than what we have here, a lot more room for the kids and for everything. So. If, in, if you remember the, the prophetic words that we've had, we've, God has always promised that we'd have room for all sorts of things, for schools and, and church and kids and even prayer areas and areas for the, for the generals to meet. So that one was looking pretty good. Um, so we thought we'd, we'd um, go through a process with council to get a pre-lodgement meeting with them to see how open they were to us moving into that place in Eagle Farm. And when that meeting came, they said, no, they would not support a church in that area. So we had to, we had to walk away from that one or at least try to, try to fight council. So eventually we decided that it was the expectation of what we needed to pay and the, the fact that council wasn't supportive. Um, we decided not to, not to pursue that one. And then we found out in January, or end of January, that the building had been sold to a developer and that they would, they would give us a, a very short notice period, maybe two or three months. Uh, a few weeks later, they told us that they're going to give us one month's notice. So we'd been looking quite, quite extensively over that time to, to find premises. But if you know the commercial market in Brisbane, it's quite tough to find places, especially for churches who have to go through a council process. So that, so we eventually negotiated that we'd be able to extend our stay until, until the, till next weekend. Um, we were going to have to leave before Easter, which would have been very, very difficult for us. So that was a, a little reprieve that we had there.
So since that time, we, we also found uh, another place in, in Salisbury that we thought had good prospects. It had good parking in the area. It was a standalone building. So there was no interaction required between the church and surrounding businesses. But our town planner looked at it a few times and eventually he came back to us and said, I don't think council would approve this one either. And so there was another one, another building nearby that we looked at and the facilities there were much better, the parking was better, the, everything seemed better in that one. But um, we had some neighbours close by so we, we weren't sure whether council would approve that one. So when our town planner looked at that, he said, no, that one, that one has good possibilities. So we just need to go through a process um, with council. Um, we've started a, a pre-lodgement application. So in about three weeks, we'll know whether that, that building is suitable for us or not. And then if that's positive, we go through a process where we look at um, sound restrictions and parking, traffic flow, all those things that are, are needed for a church. So the whole process could take maybe three or four months. So in the interim, we still need a place to, to meet. So um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we actually found a suitable location in Springwood that would seat up to, a, up to 500 people. Um, so it will be the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Barbarella Drive in Springwood. So they've given us the the building for Sunday afternoons to, to meet in. They, they already have a church meeting, a smaller church meeting in the morning, but um, we're wanting to trial a 3 p.m. service on Sundays just to make it a little bit easier for families. Um, we haven't been able to trial it in this building because New Hope have been using the building quite extensively up till about one o'clock, and so um, it wouldn't give us much time to, to do all the necessary preparations for music team and, and everything. So we haven't been able to trial that in our current location, but we will be trialing it in the interim in, um, in Springwood. And also we're sort of 80, 90% sure that we'll be able to do our Friday nights there. Um, most likely our first one will be the miracle meeting on the 12th. And so that will still be at 7 p.m. So just to let you know, we will let you, we'll let you know for sure next week what's happening with the miracle meeting on Friday, the 12th. But um, it's pretty certain that we'll be there at 7 p.m. on Friday, the 12th. And then also our first Sunday service there will be Sunday, the 14th at 3 p.m. So... That is, I think that's all the news that now you know as, almost as much as I do about what's happening. So um, I was just blessed that God gave us that, gave me that promise that when the time is ready, he will have a house for us. He will have a place for us. So just, Beck, if you want to come up and introduce. Thank you, Pastor Tom. Can we give Pastor Tom a hand? Yeah, we so appreciate him. And I just want to honor him. Like there is a lot, I, I don't know if you gathered, there's a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of toing and froing, a lot of things to consider. And he's really doing an amazing job. And we're so, so grateful. So thank you, Pastor Tom. So wonderful. So how are you? Easter Resurrection Sunday, best Sunday ever. Um, as you heard Pastor Tom mentioned, our wonderful, beautiful mama in the house, Pastor Catherine, has lost her voice. So she can't preach this, morning, this afternoon. But we're very excited that um, our wonderful, wonderful friend and son of the house, I want to say, <laughs> uh, Josh Suarez is preaching tonight. Yeah, it's very cool. But we wanted to do something a little different and a little special, I think, for Resurrection Sunday. And we wanted to take time, first thing out, to have communion together. To have communion and remember. To have communion and remember and celebrate what God has done. So 
Um, I know you would have got communion on the way in, but if you haven't got it, could you just give us a wave and our team would love to just come and make sure you've got communion ready, ready to go. Thanks, guys. It's so lovely. So we've all got something in our hand and, and I get to just lead us through communion, which is such an honor on Resurrection Sunday, to focus on the one. On the one true God that did so much. You know, I was reading the scripture and the story again, and I like to read it in all the different Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, just because you get to see and hear all the different sides of it. And it struck me again, just the, the man who was innocent, the man that knew no sin became sin for us. And the, the, the biggest thing that they could accuse him of was for starting religious riots. You know, they were accusing him of this and accusing him of that and, and, and called it worthy of being crucified on the cross, worthy of being sentenced to death. And it says in 2 Corinthians 5.12, it says, for, the sake, for our sake, he made him to be no, um, no sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So God, who had no sin, knew no sin, blameless, stood in our place, took all the sin, took all the shame, took all the results of sin, took all the results of death, took all the results of, of bad health, of, of trauma, of, of addiction, of, of depression, of every, every area he took upon himself. Sinless, blameless, spotless. They couldn't really accuse him of anything really that made sense to be, to be condemned to death. He took it on himself and he stood so that we could stand in right standing. It was the ultimate victorious setup. Like a good, good father does, sets their children up for the next generation. He's God the Father sent his son to set us up in right standing with him, to set us up in healing, to set us up to be blameless and to be forgiven, to set us up to walk into eternal life with him, to set us up into relationship with Jesus. The fa this Father God, he gave his sin, his son, I should say, who had no sin to become sin for us. And we get to thank him today. We get to honor him. We get to celebrate the victorious gift that he gave for us to be in right standing with God, to be called blameless, to be called spotless, to be, have our sin wiped as white as snow, to be able to stand into relationship with him, blameless, so why don't you with me, why don't you stand if you don't mind, if you're able. And if you've got your communion, why don't you open it. And we just remember this body that took the whipping and the bruising and the beating for no reason. <laughs> for our sake, for our sake, bruised for our iniquities. so that we could stand in right standing and so we could stand in wholeness, wholeness in every part of our bodies, whole and healed. So Father, we say thank you, God, on this Resurrection Sunday, Lord, we take the bread now and we say thank you for your body broken for us. Thank you for your body bruised for us, God. We say thank you for dying for us, Lord so that we could be healed and so that we could be whole. Lord, we take, your, we take this symbol, God, of your body broken and we remember and we say thank you, God. We say thank you, God. We say thank you. Why don't you go ahead? We say thank you, God. And for your blood poured out, that washes away our sin. That washes away our sin. And that brings us into right standing with you, God. Oh, thank you. Lord, we lay it all at your feet. 
we lay it all at your feet, Lord, and we thank you for what you've done, that we can be called blameless and spotless before you. And we can walk in right standing with you. And we can walk in relationship with you. We say thank you for your blood. We say thank you, Lord. Why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we partake, God, we remember this symbol. And we say thank you, God. And we, we recognize, Lord, the victory that you took over hell and over death. Lord, the victory you took over sickness, the victory you took over depression, the victory you took over anxiety, the victory you took over trauma, the victory you took over every area. And we thank you for it. And we step into victory tonight. We remember the victory. We celebrate the victory as children of God. And we step into it tonight. And we say, thank you, Jesus. We say, thank you, Jesus. We say, thank you, Jesus. Yes, and amen. Why don't you say amen and amen? Amen, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Oh, and as we remember what God has done, as we celebrated what God has done, what a way to celebrate this Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to welcome Josh Suarez as he comes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Two. Man, if we can stay standing just for a moment, those that can. I think we're going to go back into all hail King Jesus. Who knows there's 4,200 religions around the world and there's only one with an empty grave. We serve the only one who conquered sin and death. If you go to that grave, he is no longer here. He is risen. Who knows that? I sense today that the Lord is going to deliver people from tombs of depression from tombs of infertility. I was praying on the altar this, just this before and I, I really sense that tombs of disappointment God was going to release people from. From tombs of abandonment, from tombs of shame, from tombs of sickness, tombs of cancer, tombs of back problems. I'm telling you, church, this is something to get excited about. This is Resurrection Sunday. We serve a living God who carries resurrection power. And that same power lives on the inside of us. So let's worship Him once more. Let's lift up the Name of Jesus here. Let's really shout from the bottom of our lungs, from everything within us, that we serve a God who is risen. He is no longer here, but He is risen. He is no longer here, but He is risen. He is no longer here, but He is risen. He is no longer here. He is risen. Thank you, Jesus.
We serve a worthy God. We serve a good God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a resurrected King, church. We serve a resurrected King, which means it doesn't matter what your circumstances look like. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I can tell you that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that resurrection power can come and meet you anytime. That resurrection power is here today. What a privilege that we get to worship the one true God. What a privilege. What a privilege it is. Thank you, Lord. Man, how good is God? How good is God? Let's give Him a clap offering. Let's give Jesus a clap. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll have you guys back soon. If I can, that'll be wonderful. You can take a seat, church. Man, how, who's excited about Resurrection Sunday? Hey, the world thought, thought it was over on Friday. When he breathed his last, the devil, ha, 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 He thought it was over. But who knows, he went down to hell and got the keys for us. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. That changes everything, church. That changes everything. That literally changes everything. Can you imagine that moment? These guys have been following Jesus for three years, walking around, and people that had known him for a long time before that, all of a sudden they thought what they believed had died on that cross. There's many people around the world today that live in that place. They think what they've had has completely died, but I'm telling you, there is resurrection power. Three days later, he rose from the dead. That's an exciting thing. That is an exciting thing. I want to talk a little bit about the empty tomb, but not so much the empty tomb, but what it means for us. I believe the empty tomb proves three, three things. He is faithful, number one. He is powerful and he is willing. He is faithful, he is powerful and he is willing. He is faithful ever since Adam and Eve messed up. God promised that he would crush what was once wrong, once and for all. And at the right moment, Jesus would come and fulfill what he had set out and what he had promised. See, church, he is faithful even when we're not. He is faithful when we're not. And who knows that we go through seasons in life where we are not faithful. We're not faithful to the call. We're not faithful to the promise. We're not faithful to his voice when he says, come along. We can sit on Netflix a bit too long. Often we fall short, yeah? But he is always faithful. He is always faithful. He's never not been faithful. Let me tell you some scriptures about being faithful. It says here that people that don't know him, and I really believe that there's resurrection power going to raise people from the dead here today, people that don't know him. I'm telling you, the power to raise you from the dead is in this room today. All it takes is an obedient yes and a confession of your mouth, and I'm telling you, your world will be different. We know so many people that die before their time. I don't want to go into my story because people know my story, but just a little bit of a background. I've, man, I've buried more people than I should have. I've had friends that have been on my doorstep that have passed away that night. I don't know where they've gone, but I'm telling you, there's an opportunity here today for you to receive Jesus. I don't know where you're at, but I do remember this. I remember having a prayer meeting about 15 years ago and I could literally hear the screams. And I didn't know what they were in this prayer meeting, but it felt audible where the, the hairs on my neck, my back, everything just literally rose up. And I was, what the heck is that? It actually sounded like, I can only describe it like this. It sounded like someone was getting put through a wood chipper. And I felt the Lord say, that is my children going to an eternity without me. And I'm telling you, that is not his plan. It was never his plan. He laid on that cross and gave his life for you. He is always faithful. It says here, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. So it's not just one generation, church. The foundation of his faithfulness has been set from generation to generation to generation. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is the faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. See, the whisper of the enemy will tell you that it's over and it's done. He likes to do that. But I'm telling you, every day his mercies are new. Every day his mercies are new. Every single day his mercies are new and they're new new here today. I sense the presence of the Lord and I truly believe there's people even sitting in their seat today that are going to be healed without even a hand being laid upon them. Because resurrection power is in the house. Church, we have something that 42 other religions don't have. We have got the living king that lives inside of us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And now he lives in us. How powerful is that? That changes everything. That changes everything. That changes how you walk into your workplace during the week. That changes how you walk into your workplace during the week. When you know he lives in you, when you know that very power that was exerted to raise him from the dead lives on the inside of you, that changes everything. That flips the script on everything. He's powerful. Acts 2.23 says, being delivered by the determined purpose for knowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death who God raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Man, he loosed the pains of death. Have you actually sat there and thought about the process that that would have taken? Revelations 1.18 says, I am the living one, I died, but look, I'm alive forever. And I hold the keys to the death and the grave. He holds the keys to death and the grave. It means we don't have to fear about a darkness when we breathe our last. For those that know him, I love what Billy Graham says, when people tell you I'm dead, don't believe it. I'm more alive than ever. I've just transitioned to a better place. But who knows, that's the promise of every born again believer. We can put our trust and our our heart into that promise that he hung on the cross and he died and three days later he rose again. Man, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. We serve a God of redemption. You only have to come here to this church on a Friday night and see the miraculous power of God at work. To see lives being transformed on the altar. To see cancer shrivel. To see people receive new life. To see the blind open their eyes. To see deaf ears pop. Man, God is good. He is so faithful and he is so powerful. I was just in um, Nashville a few weeks ago and we were out on quad bikes. I'm going on a bunny trail here, but it just... I was out on quad bikes and we ran into some families that... Uh, I don't want to use the wrong terminology, but they call it themselves, they say this. They were a redneck, uh, like hillbillies, so to speak, like right in the bush in trailers on property. Like when, when they say proclaim, they say proclaim. And we're out there and we had 10 minutes with them as we went past. It was this family and this is what God can do in 10 minutes. Two people got delivered and a deaf lady got her hearing back. We're out riding quad bikes around the property. God, God can do anything, church. Anything if you give him your time. He is powerful and he is faithful and he is willing. He is willing because he is mercy. He's willing because he is love. He's willing because he is grace. He's willing because he's good and he's willing because he's kind. He sent his only son 
He is willing. Matthew 8 talks about a leper and he came and worshipped him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. See, Jesus is always willing. The problem is often we don't see how willing he really is because we, we don't mind believing that he's willing for other people. Like if Sister Sarah had a problem, we would know that God is willing to heal her. Or if Brother Barry, it's just that Sister Sarah and Brother Barry went together. We would have the faith to believe that he is willing, but when it comes to our own life, often we don't think he is willing because we see it from our perspective to him and not his to us. I laid on the bed the other day and I was worshipping the Lord and I felt him say to me, Josh, picture you're me. And I'd never done this before and I was laying on the bed and I could feel the pleasure and the happiness and the joy that he had towards me and I opened my eyes and he goes, son, that's how I always look at you. I see my son. He is always willing, church. He is always willing. It doesn't matter how small the issue is. It doesn't matter how big the issue is. It could be a headache. It could be cancer. I'm telling you, God is always willing. No one came to Jesus where he didn't manifest the actual promise to that person. You agree, church? Give me some feedback here, otherwise I'll get insecure. Good? He is willing. He is willing. Darkness that threatens to have the final word no longer has the final word. His blood speaks a better word. His blood speaks another better word. Yeah? How good is that? How good is that promise? That we don't serve a dead God. Buddha said, I know a way. Muhammad said, I'll show you a way. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. There is only one way. And that is through Jesus. Jesus. Let's pick up here on Luke 24. This is powerful. Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices from which, two seconds, just get a quick drink, from which they had prepared. This will be my only drink. And as it happened, they were greatly perplexed about the... Ah, sorry. They went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As, and it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you? When he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned, ran from the tomb, and told these things to the eleven and all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna the Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles, and their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marvelling to himself at what had happened. See, this is resurrection power, guys. It brings things back to life. But I'm telling you, just like Mary, just like these girls, when you're delivered from the tomb, it says here that they turned away, returned, and ran from the tomb. They didn't go back. The tomb was in the past. There is many people here and I know that people have been delivered from certain things. You've encountered the power of God. You've encountered the resurrection power of God. But if you don't run from that tomb, it'll sing a song and lure you back. And eventually you end up smelling like death again. It happens subtly. This is why I believe that it says that they turned around and ran. They ran from the tomb. I know my life and, and, and people here know sort of, I can't, 
just to touch on it, you know, the, the traumas, and, and this is no excuses, this is reasons that sometimes we live the way we do. And so I'm not discounting trauma, I'm not discounting um, inner healing and what the Father can do. You know, I went to 35 schools, sexual abuse, off the rails, burnt down homes, did everything you can think of, I did it. That was a lot of trauma. See, I encountered the resurrection power of God in year 2000. I believe I walked out of that tomb. But stuff I hadn't dealt with caused me to walk back to it. It will lure you back. This is why I love in John 11, Lazarus was raised from the dead. He was resurrected three chapters or three, three verses later, or three chapters later, he's reclining against Jesus. So he went from resurrected to reclining. He went from raised to resting. How do you do that? You've got to encounter the love of the Father. You've got to encounter his love. See, John talks about this story here that I just said, and it, it actually, Mary r- runs back and tells Peter and John. They both start running, but yet John reaches the tomb before Peter. Now, my brain, knowing what I know about John and, and, and Peter, I would assume if someone told me to bet, and I don't bet, I would bet that Peter would win that race. He just strikes me as the person to win it. See, Peter knew that he loved God. John knew that God loved him. And I believe when love is at the forefront and the foundation of who you are, you will always get to the destination quicker. You will always get to the destination quicker. It will cause you to run properly. It will cause you to run straight. And if you fall over, you'll be able to get back up because it isn't based upon how much you love him but how much he loves you. See, if we focus on how much we love him, we're always going to judge ourselves based on where we are in that moment and we're always going to fall short because I yelled at the cat, kicked the dog. I didn't and I haven't. Not these ones. Oh, my goodness. Not these ones. But the reality is when we focus on his love for us, that changes everything because that doesn't change. No matter what you do, that doesn't change. No matter what you do, that doesn't change. No matter what you do, that doesn't change. Come on. That is good news, church. That is good news. I believe if we truly believed that that doesn't change, you would be a bit more excited about that. That doesn't change. Amen? That doesn't change. It doesn't matter how grim life looks. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm telling you, and we've all been through journeys and stories and everyone's been through different things and it can look like it is over. It can look like God isn't going to show up and at the 11th hour, he comes back to life. People here have had bad diagnosis on things. I'm telling you, the resurrection power of God can heal. He can transform. Man, we see it here. We've been to Brazil. Man, we've seen tumours shrivel. Metal plates disappear. My goodness, I wish Pastor Catherine had her voice because she'd tell more stories today about what just happened. But this is the God we serve. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. It really doesn't. If you connect with the resurrection power of God, everything shifts. Everything shifts. Everything shifts. That's how good he is. No one is ever too far gone. You know, it annoys me when people go, oh, Jesus, please come back. Because it makes me think they have no loved ones that don't know Jesus. Because if you come back and they don't know him, well, their loved ones are... We keep asking for a better day. 
that better day come 2,000 years ago. That better day hung on the cross and then was resurrected and now he lives in us. We are the better day. We are the better day because of who he is. Man, we serve a good God. He's not after anything special. He's not after any superstars. I'm telling you, he's not. He's after people that would lay down their life for him. I can't tell you how blessed I am of what God's done in my world, my family's world. So you can operate with the power of God without knowing the love of God. That's why gifting doesn't mean anything. People need to know the love of the Father and what it means that he sent his son to die for me and you. I love what was said on Friday night. Peter would have been rode off, sorry Peter, David would have been rode off by 99% of people today. An adulterer, a murderer, but yet he was a man after God's own heart. Don't look at what you've done. Don't look at all the negative things. Don't listen to the voices that tell you all the bad things that you've done and been through. Look at the empty tomb and what that means. I say this all the time, God's not a God of second chances. Whoever told you that didn't tell you the truth because if he was a God of second chances, we wouldn't have a Bible and 99% of you wouldn't be sitting here. But he's the God of another chance if you love him and you trust him. See, we go through things and we get delivered from tombs and all of a sudden we end up back in them. But I believe today this is a pivotal moment for not just this church or what we're stepping into, but for people here today that God is going to set you free from tombs and close those doors. I see earthquakes coming over those tombs where they cannot be reopened. The things that you've kept on going back to through unhealed parts of your life, they're being eradicated. That's the power of the cross and what he done. You know, five years ago, I went off the rails after being in church for 16, 17 years. Like, off the rails, worse, like, and when I, when I say worse, 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 I would say worse than my childhood, and I was right off the rails. And people would say to me, didn't you know better? Yeah. I did but I didn't know the love of the Father. Until I came here and I had an encounter with the Lord and church, it's not good enough just to come to church. Church won't make you a Christian any more than McDonald's will make you a hamburger. <laughs> it won't. But I believe the Father wants to encounter every single person here today. And I don't know where your life has been. I don't know where, where you've been up and down. I don't even know. There's people maybe here that don't even know him, have, have never known him. And to be honest, I was one of them. When someone first told me about Jesus, I thought it was about 12 drunk guys wearing sandals, walking around. That was just, I'm being real, that was my theology. But I saw a miraculous move of God in my mum and it raised questions. 
But I don't believe there's any coincidence that you guys are sitting here today on Resurrection Sunday that I'm standing before you now. And I don't know where your life's at. As I said before, I've seen so many people come and go in this life. I, I, too many. And I've always said I'll never, ever allow an opportunity to pass where I don't give people an opportunity to receive him. This moment is the most pivotal, most important moment that you'll ever, ever have in your life. I don't know how many chances people get. I don't. But I know you're going to get one. I know you're going to get one now. Bible says time, life is like a vapour. Six o'clock right now. In a minute, it'll be 6.01. We'll never get that minute back. But if I can ask the worship team to come back, please. I don't know how many opportunities he'll give in life. I know that we don't deserve them. I can tell you four years ago, my wife nearly rang the ambulance to come and get me because my heart was stopping. But he loves you so much and his pursuit and love will keep chasing you down. He'll never stop. I'm telling you, life apart from him, hell was never designed for you. It never was. And what he offers is free. It cost him a lot. He sent his son. I know what it's like. I've lost a son. I can't imagine watching the boy that I lost getting beaten and whipped and having to stand there and watch it. But yet he did that for us. He did it for you. He did it for me. So that one day when we breathe our last, it won't be the end, but it will be the beginning. So out of respect, if you can bow your heads, close your eyes. And even as I'm saying this, you, there's something in your spirit. And if you're, if you're quiet enough and you quieten your heart, quieten your soul down, you'll hear him knocking on your door of your heart. You'll know it's him. But if you're here today and you do not know him, or maybe you once did, but if something happened to you today, there is doubt and there is an unsureness of where you're going to go. I'm not going to count the three. I'm just going to ask you to put your hands up. If you're here, just put your hands up. Thank you, Father. I see your hand. I see your hand. Is there anybody else? I'm telling you, church, out of all the things you can ever do in life, this is the most important thing you will ever do. If you've walked away from God, there's no shame, I'm telling you. Who gives a rip what the person next to you thinks? Sister Sarah and Brother Barry aren't going to be standing next to you in front of God. Your mum's not going to be standing next to you in front of God. Don't let this opportunity pass. If you have walked away, 
Put your hand up. Let us pray. Give us the honour of praying for you. I see your hand. I feel there's more people. I do. I can feel it. Church, can we pray together? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus, for dying for me on the cross. God, I know I was a sinner in need of a saviour. I believe that you died for me, that you were buried and you raised from the dead. And I ask you to come and live on the inside of me. Make me new. I receive you today, Jesus. If you're online and that is you and you're listening, just type anywhere on your keyboard. I want to receive Jesus. Or if you're rededicating, write that. I'm coming back. We've got people, amazing people who will follow you up. Man, I sense that God wants to heal some people. Can we pray for some people? Thank you, Father. As we worship, if you've got pain in your body or you're needing prayer, we're going to have the team get ready to pray for you. I really believe that the power of God to heal is here today. If you've got sickness, if you're carrying sickness, as I said before, I really felt even the tomb of infertility. I felt like God was going to do some internal work for people today. People are going to sleep well tonight. People that have been tormented. People are going to have visitations. Man, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. So if you're needing any prayer as we get into worship, can you please come and fill the altar? Come and flood the altar. It's on the altar you get altered. (laughs) It's on the altar you get changed. This is guilt-free, shame-free. Don't listen to the enemy. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him to say you're too far gone. You know, even the season we're in as a church, I truly believe like, it might be a surprise to some of us, but it was never a surprise to God. He knew we'd be in this moment at this time right now leaning in and trusting. But I believe we're going to go from glory to glory. I truly believe that. The mandate on this house, glory to glory, glory to glory. So as we worship, come down. We'd love to pray for you. Come down. Thank you, Jesus. Ministry team, yes, please. Could have only been the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, it was the blood. Could have only been the blood. Thank you, Jesus.
Isn't the Father wonderful? Please, if you are wanting prayer at all, don't leave on Resurrection Sunday without getting prayer. We've got our team here that want to pray for you, that want to bless you. If there's anything that you need prayer for, we want to pray. So please come down the front. There, I know that there are some hot cross buns at the back to bless you on your way out and celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Celebrate the victory that we get to walk in because of Jesus. Um, and we want to bless you. We want to bless your family this Resurrection Sunday. We will see you back here in the building next Friday and next Sunday. But be blessed as you go. And happy Resurrection Sunday. We bless you, family.